Hi, and uh, welcome to the second installment of Frank and Mary on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the show, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell, and my co-host is our good friend, my good friend, Sandy Cordoby, who most people on the island know. She's a, 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 a grew up here, registered nurse, runs Horizons Geriatric Care, uh, a, a, this just terrific geriatric care management company. And the goal of the program is to introduce you to things that are available here, p the people you need to know and the services that you want to know about here on the island, and also to introduce you to some stuff off of the island. But today, we've got one of those anchor institutions that like a lot of people don't know about. Um, so we have Scott Gerstmar, uh, who is with his wife, Ellen, who is sitting way over there someplace. Mm -hmm. Um, but thank you very much, Scott, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, he, so he and his wife, you and your wife, have started the Henrietta Brewer House a while ago, a yes. few years ago? back in uh, 1994. And I remember first walking into the Henrietta Brewer House because Sandy Cordomi said, you got to go see this place, mm -hmm. right? So I walked in and I remember saying to myself, yeah, this is kind of old, you know? Because you're used to going into the assisted livings with the chandelier and all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've just come to love it. I've just come to love it because right. it's a really special place. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, was, I was hoping you could kind of talk to us a little bit about how that, how you, that came to be, because mm -hmm. I think you guys actually started sure. this, right? Yes. Um, and then what it, what it was, what it is, how, and how you can imagine it into the future. Is that, I know that's a lot. It's a lot, that's but a lot. we can do but that. Kinda, yeah. We'll start at so, the yeah, beginning so for just sure. Kinda, just kind of talk, tell yeah. us about that, tell us about that. Um, back in the early 90s, um, my grandmother, who was Henrietta Brewer, um, hence was, the name, hence the hence name, the name. Right. was living on the island. She didn't have a house on the island, but she was at uh, Havenside. Um, and um, as um, things progressed with her um, in her early stages of getting more and more confused, we'll say. Um, she has some memory issues. Memory issues. Yeah. And she was doing things that weren't totally appropriate for her to be there by herself. Um, we looked into possibilities of what to do, whether to have a caregiver there with her, um, what the options were, the best. My mother and my father live here on the island. My father has, has passed away a few years back. Yeah. My, my mother's still here. Um, it was her mother. Yeah. And she wasn't quite sure what the best options were out there. We looked into it and she turned to me. We had a house on Center Street. Uh, yeah. We have t had two children, still do, um, that were in the house at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we happened to have an apartment in the back. So the house was full up, but the apartment was something we realized we could make available to her. Take her furnishings, everything yeah. that she loved, move it into the apartment, and then bring caregivers in to help her, which we did. And this was in your house? This was in our house yep. in the yep. early 90s, yep. early 90s, before the Brewer House, obviously. Um, and that went great. We had personal care attendants, CNAs, we had various people helping um, Ellen and myself take care of my grandmother. She was a wonderful lady. Um, that's the inspiration uh, towards the Brewer House. But what we started to see was there was a void there between home care and long-term care. And when you say long-term care, you mean nursing home care. Correct. And, and, and so at that time, there was kind of nothing, nothing in, the, in the middle. No, there wasn't. There, there were a few things going on, like, a, like Elizabeth Sandlin, I think you guys talked about that before, mm -hmm. um, was running. She was doing, uh, like so, Long Hill, it was um, in, I believe, West Tisbury before it ended up in Eggertown. Yeah. So she was Comedy doing, yes, yeah, so, yep, exactly. And that was great, but there was still a big void. And yeah. what we really noticed was there were no home-like environments that were in a business format where you could actually have somebody go there and have all their needs taken care of. Um, long-term care is wonderful when you need to be at long-term care, but it is more of an institutional type of a care. Yeah. We started to and searched out to find a place that we could actually convert and maintain a home-like environment that just seems like your home. It was very difficult to do to find enough rooms to make it feasible. Yeah. But through time, through permitting, through the various things, we were able to get the Henrietta Brewer House up and running. Sorry to say it was after my, my grandmother Henrietta passed away, but we did get it up and running. And um, from there we grew. It's and, and, it w and when you start, so the, the structure that you have, which is on 
It's on so off Causeway. Of Causeway. Off Our of Causeway driveway Street. is 11 Max Lane. I've, I've driven by it. I think I get it right about half the time. I'll drive by. <laughs> I can never find it. So anyway, I know where we are now. So, so, but you started off with in a, in a smaller structure, and then yes, it, kinda, it just kind of grew. Because it, it looks like it's kind of grown over time. It has. It was a guest house originally. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, the guest house we purchased and converted and slowly added more onto it. Yeah. We redid the kitchen. We added an addition onto the back. It originally started off with about eight rooms um, that were available, eight units. Yeah. Um, now we're at, we have 14 units, and uh, most of them have private baths, and we have one suite and a couple of them that have shared baths, but there's 14 private units within at, the building. At, at this point. And yes. I think the really neat thing is... And I was just going to say, so Sandy... I think the really neat thing is, is that Scott and Ellen have the experience of, of being at home and providing home care, and Scott, you've got a medical background. Yes, that was one of the original reasons that my mother said Nana needs to go with you because <laughs> I was in emergency medical services, which I did for 17 years, and I was running the Tisbury Ambulance Service back there at that time. So it was a better fit. Yeah. 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 So Scott, having the the medical background to to understand some of the nuances of taking care of an elder, um, and having tried it at home, and and saw what those resources were available back in 1994 which is a little different today, but I don't think hugely different, and then um, took it a step further to provide that in the middle care of, you know, doing it at home versus um, a nursing home like Windermere, which is a wonderful place if you need that. But where's the, where's the piece in the middle? Where's the piece in the middle? And I think a lot of our elders are, would benefit from access to that piece in the middle because home care is not for everyone, and not everyone is ready for a nursing home level. And, and I mean, to be, once again, to be fair, most people dread going to a nursing home. Mm -hmm. So every, I think pretty much your goal in life, before you're dead, because everybody's, everybody, you know, the, there's, a, there's a kind of a clarity to all of this, which you come to appreciate doing nothing but elder law, because I'm dealing with clients who are aware of the fact that they're really going to die. I always often talk about that. I always say, your kids don't get it yet. They don't, the death is too theoretical, but you all you have to realize, and you, and, you know, and there comes a point at which, you don't fear that. Well, you fear it. It's not great. I mean, it, but but you know, but you're okay with that. What you dread is this frailty. This you know, dread the pain and sometimes the sure. confusion, and also this notion that you're going that you're going to be in a place that doesn't feel like home. That you're just not going to be correct. And and that's and and so for one of the things I remember the first thing, not the first thing I remember about the Henrietta Brewer House, but I remember going as, as we went along. I remember going there because there was someone there who was a client who was in, basically you were taking care of him in the, what, you, what it was referred to as the hospice room, right? Mm -hmm. It was pretty much mm -hmm. the room where, uh, where people occasionally die, you mm -hmm. know, and that, but it was just, it was like a regular, it was a, like, you know, my bedroom as a kid, you know, sure. it, was, it was a regular room, you know, and it was very kind of warm feeling and, and, and felt very close. So it was, it was, and if the goal of the exercise is to live as well as you can until you die. A piece of that is that when you, when, when, whether you are, you just want to be not cooking your own meals or you're dying, sure. right? You want to feel like you're at home. You want to have this. That whole component, the assistance with the activities of daily living, yeah. is generally what a state license assistant, uh, assisted living facility is about. Um, can we do things that are before and, and that yeah, and above that? Right, right. Absolutely. But when those things happen, um, we do have to step into the arena of getting additional care to cover those things that are above and beyond what those right. um, assisted living rules uh, encompass. And we do that because what we find is when somebody does come in and is comfortable and accepts the Brewer House as their home now, the last thing we want to do when things become more confusing and troubling is move them on to something else. Just to move. Exactly. Because so bad enough that you're feeling frail and confused. Yes. The last thing you need is to move. And since Long Hill closed, I've actually had a couple of folks. Long Hill was the law, was the assisted living in Edgartown that is beautifully run by Elizabeth Sandland, who Ran has, for a long who time. has and once decided again, to retire. And predated yeah. your place, right? It was a a by, by, by a couple of by years. A couple of years. And yeah. we got licensed as assisted living at the same time. 
And Elizabeth, Ellen, and I have always been close friends. I We've see. always been very yeah. good yeah. connections. So she, she closed very recently, right? She a few did. months ago. Yeah, just a couple months ago. Because we were just talking about that on our first show. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, a, and in conversation with some folks in the community, one of the things that I heard, which surprised me a little bit, was that, yes, they knew of the Henrietta Borough House, but what they knew of Long Hill that they felt wasn't true about the Henrietta Borough House is that once you became at end of life, um, that you had to leave the Brewer House, which I happen to know was not at all true. Um, yeah. That, like Long Hill, that you know it is now home, and we right. will do everything that we can to bring in the extra support if we need that. The 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 person that you saw there um, was a was a really classic example of a man that never married, and um, and he was elderly, although I think he was only in his seventies, yes. and um, which was too young. Much. Um, much too young, but he had an end-of-life diagnosis, and he had some support, informal support on the vineyard of friends that were caring for him, but he needed the one-on-one -on -one care, or he needed round-the-clock care, and, um, and requested admission to the Borough House for end-of-life care, and we were so thrilled to see how that went for him as he got to be comfortable and know that somebody was always on the other end of yeah. the bell and could meet his needs and um and the borough house did an amazing job caring for him and um and his friends as well and by the way when you say when you say we once again full disclosure so you you, you do some work at the at i the, do at the borough house i do i do your, the nursing in piece. addition to your day job right right, right. it's a very tiny tiny little piece yeah but yeah. i do the um i do the nursing piece which is in an assisted living is really supporting and training the staff and making sure that um, the care plans, the care that's delivered to the residents yeah. is appropriate to their level of need. And, and I want to be talking about- It's a large piece. And she, <laughs> she does a wonderful job. And, and I want to be talking about very, the staffing issue important. and the training issue in a second, but I also want to it's talk huge. about, I know one of the things that we were talking about with you and your lovely wife who was off camera, so I won't look at her because she's <laughs> off camera right now. Oh no, you can't look, you can't look. Um, what was the, the the, cha the changing characteristic of characteristics of the population that you have, because okay. once again, you, you're in a position now where you've been running for a long time, sure. so you've been uh, 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 able to see some of those changes. And I thought those, I'd like you to describe those, because I think they're also describing a broader demographic shift that is occurring in the island yes. that I heard, I've heard described by a sure. Patty Moore, by a number of people yeah. in there. Sure. Just talk about that. In the earlier years when we started assisted living, we found that a lot of the people that were coming to our facility were people that were on the island, there were island people that really didn't know what else to do but wanted that home-like environment. And we have seen that change over the years mm -hmm. to um, a lot different situation. And the reason I believe that is, and a lot of the people that we are now seeing and talking with about their mother and fathers coming to the Brewer House, yeah are baby boomers that are now retiring. And they're not, not a disparaging term here since we're all in, in that, that category, yeah, yes. Yeah. And are, that are now retiring. We're, we're great, we had a great time. It, it was, was a great run. Absolutely. You know. And what they're finding is um, they don't want to live now in New York or Pennsylvania or wherever they're from. They want to live in their summer home that they've had here on the island because they love the island. Because they love the island. So they're retiring here. Now mom's got to come, or dad has got to come to the island to be close. Now, if the home isn't big enough, or what they choose is they don't want to have um, caregivers and other things going on while they're you know, in their home here on the island, they give us a call. They want mom nearby. They come and visit all the time. Mom's nearby. They know she's well taken care of. And dad too, not just mom. Right. Uh, leave dad in there. Um, and we're finding that seems to be more the direction that this is all heading. We find there are people that have homes that don't necessarily have the financial means to be able to do that, but they do need the caregivers. So what they will end up doing is maybe selling the home, getting the finances to be able to do that. I see. Or I see. the ones that can keep the home and have the caregivers come in and it works successfully, then home care is wonderful and we all want to stay home. Home is where the heart is, and it's always what we all try to achieve to do. But when that isn't possible and doesn't work, we're the home away from home. But so can you talk, both of you kind of talk a little bit about that? Because I know certainly for, for me, this is an, <laughs> I have these kinds of conversations, I was mentioning to you, I had a conversation like this about two hours ago down at the, yeah. at the Waterside Cafe with you know, a family, and, and so th there are, 
talk about some situations re, you know, regarding folks that you have seen where staying home makes perfect sense and home care makes perfect sense and others where it doesn't and kind of how those, in your own experience, those things have played out. Because I think those are really, there are, there are a lot of stress-filled conversations there. Mm -hmm. There are just, it's really a dif difficult thing, right? Not everybody is cut out for home care. Not everybody is cut out for home care. Um, and certainly, we all assume, and, and I think by and large, people are trying to stay home as much as they can. But always, to have always an elder who has been in the home that maybe they raised their children in um, for 40 or 50 years, and the kids are all gone off now and are living on the mainland and are incredibly successful in mom or dad, or mom and dad, our home. Um, to have someone come in if they require 24-7 care, round-the-clock care, to have someone come into the home. A stranger. Sometimes mm -hmm. is a lot more difficult for people than you would think it is. And sometimes it is a choice to sort of reset that clock and go to an assisted living. Um, also, you have the benefit of having lots of other people to talk to. And at the Henry Brewer House, they have an exercise gal that comes in a couple times a week, and they have this really cool guy that comes in and plays some music in the evening at times before dinner, and lots going on, and other people to talk to. And sometimes that is the choice, is to be where there's more people um, and more things going on. Um, we have this really fun lady from New York who um, came because her, her son and daughter-in-law are living on the island and they live in the woods up, uh, up island. And, um, and they brought her from her home in New York and they put her in their family cottage on the property which any of us would kill to live in. Yeah. It was adorable, I got to see it. And she hated it because for literally 80 years, she lived in a high rise in New York. <laughs> so at night, so she was like going back to the ca to being a caveman. She, she was, was like terrified totally isolated. of the noises that she heard at night. The giant with animals the, and the, the yeah. deer and whatnot. The and deer. Um, so they brought her over yeah. and showed her the borough house, which she thought was downtown, and she felt like she was back in the city, and she's in heaven. Oh, Loves great. it. So home care's not for everybody for a whole bunch of different reasons. I, I was. And I was going to we, say when we were when we were just talking beforehand, mm -hmm. you, you, could you just mention the story about your, da your dad? That's such a great story. Uh, the, about the yeah, but, but I want it's time to go home. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit tough, but as I, my never, never, as, yeah, as my dad that. had had I'll some memory that. issues, yeah. we took care of him at home. We had him stay home and had caregivers come in there. Yeah. It was um, it was what um, my mother and he had chosen to do. I was all supportive of that, and yep. it worked out great. I got a hold of Sostec, and um, they were wonderful in helping yep. us provide care. And we did it for a while. Um, it worked out okay to a certain point where, it, like we were saying, it, it's not right for everybody. My mother was still there doing certain things she was doing within the home, and it seemed to be that it was almost um, a little confusing for her and them having everybody in there. Yep. So it was really nice that uh, their son had an assisted living facility right down the street in Vineyard Haven. They were up in West Tisbury. So yeah, we moved dad in with us and uh, it, it went really well because we were around a lot and we got to be around him a lot. And then at one point when he got a little more confused, he did say to me that um, you know he would like to go home and and be at home for a bit and because he, he'd been at the he was at the brewer house correct, and to, correct. To, go, to go home, home. yeah and uh we said okay dad so we went back we went back home with him and we brought him yeah. home we had a caregiver with him at home and he turned and looked at me at one point and said uh, this is after, Scott, how, after how long um it wasn't long at a couple all days. a couple days a couple days and he just turned and looked at me and said scott i really like you to take me home would you please take me home and we thought that was really interesting, and he, he did. Had, he, had ended up he had redefined home. Exactly. Even home wasn't home at that point, and that happens with a lot of people, as Sandy can attest. We find that uh, very common, and we brought him back to the Brewer House, and God bless him, he stayed, you know, through the rest of his life with us there, and it was, it was a good experience. But we learned a lot from that. We learned an awful lot from that, especially being me firsthand, yeah, and my dad, was who was my favorite person, my mother and father. Just I'm very close to all of them. A good family. Um, it was so, a so great can, experience. So can we talk a little bit now about this, the training questions, right? Mm -hmm. About the, 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 the like, Carl, you got to, sorry, oh. 
Good. We're okay. Yeah. We're okay. Carl, cut that. So, you know, so you know, in, in, you know, in, 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 uh, usually it, water just shows up in a situation <laughs> like this, but all of our guys are all back screen work. <clears throat> so can we? So we talk about. So how do you find the folks though, mm -hmm. who, who are working with you, to, to working yes. with you, yes. to, who who have the knowledge really mm -hmm. to be able to work with this variety of folks who are who are at your That's place. That's a great question. And, and, and by the way, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, I want to want you to think about the corollary to that is okay. one of the things that that uh, I often talk about in other communities is the, is the role of the assisted living community in mm -hmm. really being like the training place yes. for a lot of people who end up actually doing a lot of home yes. care because because at, at the Brewer House, at the assisted living, you're, the, it's, you're doing it 100% of the time. Yes. And how do you see your role you know, in, 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 as it relates to all of that? Sure. Um, we do run a great training program. Sandy is wonderful with putting that together, providing it, making sure we cover all the different components that we need yeah. to. We usually do a, uh, a, I call them continuing ed classes, that comes from my emergency medical services background, but they're usually once a month mm -hmm. and we have rotating topics that cover various issues. Um, I myself still do um, CPR for them, American Heart Association stuff and first aid training. Um, it's, it's great and it's what brings everybody together. We consider our employees, Sandy is our nurse, um, Everybody that's on board is as a family and a team, and it's all a team effort, and it's always bringing everybody back together to make it all work. We have a dozen plus people that work at the Borough House. Mm -hmm. All of our girls currently are certified nurses' aides. We have a cook. We have Sandy as an RN, and we also have two other, uh, Melissa, um, who comes on board as an RN, and we have Katie, who comes on Kate as a, uh, sorry, as a um, LPN. LPN. We're kind of rotten with nurses over there. Right. So yes. we're everywhere. Buried, buried with them. <laughs> We're everywhere. <laughs> we're nurse heavy, uh, but in a way that's perfect because th these guys are very busy. And there's times where Sandy can't be there, right. Melissa will be there. Or, you know, whatever. Kate come in and replace, and, and there's never a, a, a void there which is wonderful. Um, and our CNAs having as many as we have, we have many different shifts that need to be covered. There's um, 24 hours a day, there's no sleep. We right. don't have a downtime. Right. It's around so the clock. So you have to have that staff. There. So there's times where there's three people on, yep. there's times where it thins down. To and, less. And, and so are you finding that there is, you have an, enough of a talent pool here to be filling all of those slots? It's, That's I'll be tell challenge. you, we managed to get it done, but boy, we need some help there. We definitely need more people. The and Brewer from, House has the same, yeah. The, over at the Brewer House, we're seeing that same thing that we're seeing in the community overall that we're, we talk about on this show and, and sort of ad nauseum. Um, and we're still working on it and, and we're getting closer and closer um, to being able to run some of our own training programs. but. I think at the Borough House we have the same issues with staffing. Um, we right. run very close to being worried about that. Um, but at the moment, we're okay. Um, we could use an extra body here or there. The, the thing that I find about the Borough House that Scott and Ellen probably wouldn't brag about because it's theirs, but I will, is that um, the staff has been there forever because they take such amazing care of their staff. And um, they, they do provide a really homey, supportive atmosphere for the staff as well as the residents so that it's home for everyone. And, um, and in, a, in the middle of a, of a bad storm or whatever, the staff is welcome to sort of bunk in with us and stay with us. And the really cool thing is we have a full generator over there. So if we've got a hurricane, you take a lot lose, of company. Yeah, right. yeah. People, people um, just got um, shown and, up. And actually they opened their doors to community folks. There was a, an elderly woman in Katama um, during one of the storms this winter that lost her electricity for several days and Scott and Ellen took her in and took care of her um, at no charge. It was amazing. So they take care of their community, their employees, the residents, um, and I know that they wouldn't say that, but I will. So, so let me ask just a question now that we're in the, in the peak season. I was, I was I, as I men mentioned to Sandy, I have this terrible feeling because now I come over here enough that when I come in the summer, I'm bothered by the traffic. It's like, and I realized, and, then, uh, and uh, like I was sitting there today, so I was trying to get to the Edgar Town before I came back here. Forget it, just forget it, right? So I'm sitting there and waiting and waiting, and then I keep, and I have to keep reminding myself that I'm part of the problem. I'm not part of the solution, you know. That, but but <laughs> we tell you that but, all the time. But do but do you, do you notice? 
does the business mm -hmm. change at all in the summer? I'm just curious. Like, do you have folks that come over that are, are almost looking for kind of, you know, some, some temporary support because you've got, you know, people coming over to vacation and... I, it can be know. that. It can be that way. It can be that way. We can also find, uh, we get calls about respite care. Um, short term, yeah. not coming in to live there, yeah. but we'd like to have so much time. Can you help us out with mom or dad? Or somebody is um, transitioning from the hospital yeah. to home yeah. and they can't really go home yet, so they need our assistance to get there. So we find ourselves bridging gaps that way. The summer is a little bit uh, busier, obviously. It's nice because everything tends to open up. Our porch in the back has oh, a, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, an yeah. awning it's over it, and we have porch, cookout yeah. areas, and it tends to, everything seems to open up, and it's busier. More family members, uh, the family members that are down here, their relatives and friends are visiting, so the place livens up. It's really, uh, no, that's it, it's, it's fun in, in, the, in that's the summertime. And I'm just going to ask you, so one other, to, once again, we were talking a little bit, little bit about this earlier. So do you, how do you see, the, 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 it, your, the brewer house changing over the next five, or do you see it changing over the next five years? And, and to the extent that mm -hmm. you are full, how, as an island matter, how, how do you think the sure. island folks should be dealing with that? How do you think as a policy matter? Well, we have watched ourselves go through the changes for 24 years, so there have been some. Um, when you're sitting in the seat that my wife and I sit in, it kind of it isn't as noticeable because it all kind of smooths into itself right. as you go. Right. But there have been, and I see us just keeping um, our facility fresh, updated, which yeah. we do all the time. We're redoing the floors coming up and a lot of different things to keep the place updated. But yeah. as far as um, where we're going to be, are we going to be here down the road? The, uh, the slot that the Henrietta Brewer House fits in here is so important. I think it needs to be here and it right. needs to stay here no matter what. Um, it's just my feelings. It, it fits perfectly in between the home care and the long-term right. care. Um, we tend to keep, just to, to address, um, are we able to do the part that we need to do to address yep. everybody who needs assisted living? We're pretty close to doing that, I think, at a, um, in the needs that we need to have. Um, yep. When uh, both Elizabeth, Ellen, and I were uh, running at full capacity, which um, now it's just us, we tended to keep two-thirds, three-quarters full, maybe yeah. running at 70% all the time. Yeah. I mean, you get full, all of a sudden something happens and this tidal wave comes and we're full and people are knocking on the door saying, well, what are you going to do, Scott? Are you going to put an addition on? Are you looking at the properties next to you yeah. to try yeah. to grow? Yeah. Um, and it's like, then you turn around and, and three weeks, a month later, Things right. You're back to seventy percent, or because right. we're dealing so with so maybe you're at the right maybe you're at the right number. And right now um, we um, are full, but we just had a room open, so um, it it it. There's an ebb and flow to it. There's a real ebb and flow yeah. to it. So everybody on the island should see this place, right? Yep. Even though, like me, the, I guarantee you, the ton of people have gone by this place a ton of times. What is your address? It's eleven. Max, which is M A C S Lane. It's off a of Causeway Road. But it's you, off a of Causeway. You miss it if you blink because right. and you're on the you're on the upper part. You're yeah. up on the top of the hill. It has a big front rolling yeah. lawn that goes up a hill you'll and go then by it sits it, back up. You'll go by it a hundred times. Yes. Right. But uh, so I am urging everybody on this island, you uh, you ought to walk if you've got a if you've got if you are a senior if you have a family member who is a senior. You ought to know that this place exists and you ought to get a sense of it. So that if your life changes, even if you're not looking for this right, if your life changes, somebody falls, you go to, you're ending up at, the, at Windermere and they're trying to discharge you and they can't figure out where to go, you want to know that this place exists, right? And have a sense of it. Once again, I've been to a lot of assisted living communities, right? This one doesn't have the big chandelier, doesn't have all of the baloney. What it has is it's just this wonderful place. So you want to go see it. Uh, Scott, thank you very much for coming on. Scott Grismar. Thank you. Thank for having you to me your wife. There. We're going to wave to your wife. Yes. Wait, you wave to your wife. <laughs> thank Sandy, you. a wonderful pleasure to have you back as a co host. Thank you, Arthur. We'll look forward to seeing you all uh, ne on uh, next month on our next installment of uh, Frank and Mary, our good friends Frank and Mary, uh, on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you. <laughs>